since starting over getting this slick module to simulate a phone line system using ESP32, now that I have Wi-Fi communication between two modules and I can generate those DTMF call progress tones, the next thing I want to do is try getting the actual slick module running again with the ESP32. So I'm using the breakout board I made last year and the place I want to start is the switch hook pin. So that's an output from this module telling us if we're on or off hook with a phone connected to it. So right now I'm powering this slick module from 3.3 volts and I have a scope probe on the switch hook. So on hook is low, off hook is high and I'm set to trigger on the edges. So if I take this off hook it started bouncing and the data sheet for the module does say you have to debounce this before you consider it stable. And the timing here for the bounce period is one thing I want to look at. And right now this is a 5 milliseconds per division so it's about 15 milliseconds of hook switch bounce signal coming out of here before we can say it definitely is off hook. When we go back on hook that's only like maybe two to three milliseconds of bounce before it's low solid. So that's something we're going to need to account for in software when we're trying to detect coming off hook and going back on hook. But I noticed something else. With this module being able to run between 3.3 and 5 volts, if I increase the supply to 5 volts, now I take the phone off hook, the voltage is higher, but this bounce period is not even 5 milliseconds. Here it's about 4. And when I go on hook, that might be one and a half or two milliseconds of bounce time before it stays on hook. And that's relatively consistent. So if I go back to the 3.3 volts, now it's back to 15 milliseconds. And it's actually fast hanging up still. But yeah, consistently 15 milliseconds to detect that we have gone off hook. So in doing the software, just to make it universal, I may want to design it with the 3.3 volts slower responding version of these signals so that the code won't stop working just because we power it differently someday. So that's one observation in order to get this thing figured out again and integrated with the ESP32. And another thing I want to get working, I can put this phone in tone or pulse dialing mode. So instead of pressing buttons and getting DTMF tones, I want to have this in pulse dial mode, simulating an old rotary mechanical phone that actually makes and breaks the hook switch contact at a certain rate and generate key presses that way. So if I press 1 to dial the digit 1, I should change the time scale so I can see what's happening. So I pressed 1 and it momentarily put the phone on hook and then took it off hook again. I'll zoom even more and generate that again. 10 milliseconds of division. So this goes low for 60 milliseconds and then it goes high again. And that 60 milliseconds of being on hook momentarily represents dialing a 1. Now if I press 2, it goes momentarily on hook twice and that would be perceived by the phone company as somebody dialing number 2. So again 60 milliseconds low and this top period we're at 20 milliseconds per division, so that's 40 milliseconds being back off hook between these pulses. So if I zoom out, now if I press 5. So we went on hook 5 times for 60 milliseconds, and in between we were back off hook for 40 milliseconds. So a total of 100 milliseconds, it looks like between the start of each pulse. And in software, this would be a matter of when we are off hook, 
and the system thinks we're going to be making a call, we detect, did we go on hook? And of course, we could have just hung up. So we want to make sure we're not really trying to dial right now. So we're going to have to have some timing going on, but if we actually pressed a digit, if we sense that we went on hook, but then in this case, 60 milliseconds later, we went back off hook, that would be interpreted as having dialed digit one. But if we then immediately have gone back on hook for 60 milliseconds and we go off hook, then we have pressed at least digit number two, because there's two pulses. And we just wait until we remain high, and then we know however many pulses, that's the button that was pressed. And if I can fit it on screen, zero is the longest string. That's 10 pulses because obviously we need one through nine for those digits and then zero is 10 pulses. So I want to get that implemented and the other two control signals on here are ring mode and a pin called forward reverse. Those will be coming out of the ESP32 into this module. So if you want to make this local plugged in phone ring because somebody else is calling, you set the ring mode pin high and then you toggle the forward reverse pin at a rate that you normally have your ring signal. So around 20 or 25 hertz in North America is a ring frequency. So software has to generate a 20 or so hertz ring pulse and set this in ring mode. So with all of these observations now, I think I'm ready to try to get some of this stuff implemented. Now, knowing how to use the slick module to look at the switch hook output and tell when we pick up a phone off hook, and now also to detect mechanical or rotary pulse dialing, and knowing how to use the other control pins to make a phone ring when it's plugged into the module, I want to do some testing with this old mechanical rotary phone. So for a ringing test on this mechanical phone, I set up a push button so that when I press it, it will make the phone ring with 20 or 25 hertz North American ring frequency, and it will just keep ringing the phone until I take it off hook again. To detect rotary dialing, there's this other retro phone project being worked on, and it looks like it was inspired by my original last year ESP8266 version of this whole phone line simulator. And since I consider myself more of a software pirate than designer, why reinvent the wheel when I can use one of these library classes and have this detect those dialing pulses from the hook switch coming out of the slick. So I downloaded this whole project and put this in the ESP32. And now if I take the phone off hook and start dialing, the numbers will show up in the serial monitor. I'm doing three at a time and then starting over just based on the way this project is currently set up. But it looks like I can get all the numbers zero through nine detected. So this project is a work in progress still, and I have notes all over the schematic and temporary parts dropped in. I have notes in a, another document tracking tests I want to do, features to consider, but everything seems to be moving along well.